My name is Matt, and I've spent my life devoted to mastering card games. Mainstream or obscure, there was no time commitment or expense too great. But most Magic players can't afford to do what I did. Because of this, I have been given a challenge. New arena account, no spending allowed, and a limited amount of playtime. Can I be competitive without spending a dime? This is free player. We hit a snag. Just when I was starting to feel comfortable with the idea of this challenge, my internet went out for three days. I thought I had the chance to expand our collection and work towards a playable historic deck, but now I was going to have to do something that would slow our progress to a crawl. I had to play Arena on mobile. Arena as a mobile app is actually really playable. Unless you're going really wide or producing a thousand triggers a game, playing constructive is intuitive, and it doesn't take much to enjoy the game. But the grind is different. You see, playing on mobile isn't bad, but winning on mobile is harder. Reading long text is hard, and those Complicated decks I mentioned earlier add win conditions you don't want to use on mobile. Mistakes happen more often and are more costly when your time is limited. And on the subject of limited, that's the other problem. Our plan was to begin doing Strixhaven quick drafts on Saturday. However, mobile is terrible to draft on. Even if you are familiar with the cards, you could easily click on the wrong card taking it when you were just trying to inspect it. The deck building UI is terrible while trying to play on mobile, and I'm not risking my prize support and hard earned gold. We have no choice. We go back into the ladder. We have to climb. Despite barriers, the first two days go pretty smoothly. We obtain a blue-black mutate deck with a massacre worm to help us along should we go black. The next daily win in the tutorial was our first mythic wild card, and the past progress revved up on Sunday when my weekly wins reset. On Monday, we finally hit pay dirt. Wizards finally stopped stringing me along and offered me five decks for 100 spells cast. I grabbed my blue-black deck and started playing. A little pro tip when dealing with quests. Long games are your friend. While it's true you want to win as many games as possible to get experience in prizing, there are diminishing returns on wins for a day, and four to five will get you a bulk of the rewards. To complete spellcasting quests, a long game you lose is more time efficient than three games you win, as long as you are casting spells every turn. Mutation Station embodies this strategy, as it has plenty of combat tricks and removal for when you aren't mutating. If we had more wild cards, replacing Rookie Mistake for Opt would give the deck much needed draw. For our purposes, it'll do. It takes nearly 60 minutes, but we end up in Silver 2 and 5 decks richer, completing the color pairs in the tutorial. There's a few goodies in here, some mediocre and some spectacular, but one card floats to the surface, Embercleave. Bonecrusher Giant, Lovestruck Beast, and now Embercleave. Two rares and a mythic from the red-green aggro standard and historic lists. Even though this deck isn't the most interesting, it's a crowd pleaser and the closest thing to a historic deck we have so far. Is this the way to go? After several days of mediocre progress, the path of least resistance is very tempting. I make three decks on hold toward our main goal, a classic red-green aggro, a more variable white weenie deck, and my favorite deck currently to play, Green White Angels. While there are good control decks and combo decks at the top, my first instinct with a brand new deck is to play aggro, 
Win or lose, the games are generally fast, and if we want to be up and running as soon as possible, I'd rather not have the learning curve of Grape Shot combo on my plate. Right now, Red Green is in the lead. At this point, I realize that holding on to packs of sets I don't plan on getting a full set of is a waste of potential cards we could use to tweak our decks. While it's not likely to get a full set of Strixhaven a month in, I have to hold those just in case. I open everything else, getting some choice rares and a few more wild cards in the Kaldheim slot than I expect. This may be a boon for us. While I was hoping to get some angels pushing me toward a deck I actually love to play, wild cards can be anything, and when building only one deck, I should want that option. We also hit 10,000 gold, so we can either do two quick drafts or one premier or traditional draft, which leads us to another dilemma, which will get us what we need. The answer is more difficult than just which gives you more cards. When drafting, you only get 45 cards regardless of which draft you do. Some might say that doing two drafts is just twice the number of cards. A no-brainer. But the prize becomes a factor as well. The most you can win in a quick draft is your money back in gems plus a bit and two packs. But Premier will give you a similar gem payout with six packs on offer. Theoretically, if you're confident in your drafting skills and you want to go infinite, this is enticing. The same skill in bot drafting knits you 90 cards plus 4 packs across 2 events, which is more than 45 and 6 packs across 1 for cards. Rares also tend to be in favor in quick draft. From my early play on my main account, the bots were passing upwards of 9 rares per draft, guaranteeing value if my goal is to make a collection. But that isn't our main goal here. Our goal is to get a deck together, and I'll have to really draft in order to try to win as many games as possible. And my time limit makes it so I have to do it quickly. Though arguments are close, I decide on quick draft for my time limitations if nothing else. One of the pros of quick draft is that you aren't on a timer, but another less spoken pro is that there's no timer waiting for other opponents. If you know your line, you can draft in a matter of minutes, which gives us more playtime. Now all we have to do is win. We didn't win. Not both, anyway. I had a sad showing in the first draft, which only netted us 200 gems for 5,000 gold. The benefit being that that would have eaten our whole pool in Premier, and we get to go again. The second is more like it, 850 gems converted. Roughly, we averaged 525 gems per draft, or 100 gems per 1,000 gold. Not the best conversion, I'll admit, but it's better for us to convert when we can. It's very rare you can only pay for things with gold, but every major event has a gem equivalent, not to mention the mastery packs. Over the next few days, we played to hit our major wins. Once at 5k again, I immediately did a quick draft, 200 gem conversion again. I need to study this set if I'm going to fix our prize payout. But we're about halfway to the mastery pass, should we choose to get it. At this point I find myself annoyed of being in silver. I keep getting close, but the mutation station deck requires a lot of luck to get to silver 1, and can get easily knocked down. It's time for a tweak. Remember when I said this deck needs opt? Well, I looked at my collection and I had four. I took out Rookie Mistake and two extra lands to slide in the playset. It's a basic change. Four commons for four uncommons. Craft worthy if you absolutely had to. With ease, I break into gold, which will add a pack to our collection at month's end. Ephidim and Home this week was historic brawl. A cruel joke for a free player according to Reddit. Most people lament that they can't make winning decks without wild cards. They'll just lose and lose and lose, they say. But in my experience, winning twice with unlimited tries isn't that difficult, even with garbage. I got lucky enough to pull a Bassery from one of my free M21 packs. 
Between that one good grace, and mostly cards given to us from the free decks with white in them, I made a janky weenie deck that curves out at 4 only for Archon and Fetters. Nothing left to do but jump in. The first win came rather quickly, but I'm not going to act like this was a cakewalk. I lost several times while attempting to get the second win. It's rough sometimes feeling dragged down by your collection, but with each game I learned a little more about what made the deck tick and what I could do to fix it. An hour in, I was just about to tweak it when I got lucky and secured a second win, which is all you need in FNM. I finished my four win for the day in standard ladder within 20 minutes and logged out before I wasted any more time. I went a little over 9 hours this week, and at first I was a little disappointed in myself. But the first week we were well under our time limit, so even 2 or 3 weeks slightly over would keep us on target for the average. That said, I'm not going to depend on that. I go back to see no progress for any of our decks of choice, but I can't help be pleased for what we accomplished this week. I wonder what lies in store.